weather service. A tornado warning has been issued for the tri-state area. Severe damage is imminent. This is Tornado Watch 97. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Geneva College Football Show. I'm Rob Pratt, along with Geneva College's head football coach, my friend Gino DeMarco. And, Coach, a great start. Hi, Rob. How are you? Yes, it's been a great start. It's been an exciting start. And uh, the Glenville State game opening night was one of the most exciting games ever to be played at Reeves Field. Unfortunately, we lost in the last second extra point, but I thought our uh, players played exceptionally well. You know, it amazes me. I mean, this is a football team that scored over 50-plus points against Clarion, shut them out, and you open up with them this year. Well, we just felt we wanted to find a formidable opponent, a very strong team to play before we got into our tough conference schedule, and Glenville State was willing to come to Beaver Falls. I think the experience is going to be very valuable down the road. All right, let's check out that exciting opener at Reeves Stadium, Geneva College, and Glenville State on Tornado Watch 97. Gino DeMarco and the Golden Tornadoes readied themselves for a week one showdown with Glenville State and Division I transfer quarterback Wilkie Perez. As advertised, Perez confounded the Golden Tornado defense with his scrambling style and pinpoint passing. Geneva countered with a young gun of their own, first-year quarterback Justin Myers. Myers foreshadowed a bright future with a 20 of 29 effort, good for 317 yards and four scores. Mike Holleran and Ken Klemensik picked up where they left off a year ago, making key catches for big games. Glenville State's fourth quarter score staked the Pioneers to a seven-point lead late in the game. But Geneva refused to go away. GT veteran Jack O'Neill blocked a Glenville punt to set up a fantastic finish. Myers found Mike Holleran on fourth down to pull Geneva within one. But the Golden Tornadoes failed to convert the extra point, losing a heartbreaker to Glenville State on opening night 36-35. Tell you, a very tough loss for your squad coach, but an exceptional performance for Justin Myers, the Forest Hills graduate. First college start. He had to replace a four-year All-American and Rich McClellan, who was the winningest quarterback in history of Geneva, and he's the NAI National Player of the Week. Tremendous, tremendous performance. You had a week off. What'd you do? Well, we looked at some of the things that we did well, and we looked at some of the things that we needed to work on, and we got better. Uh, we faced a Cumberland team who we thought was a formidable opponent. Offensively, we clicked. Defensively, we played very well, and our special teams came up with some big plays. Five minutes to go in the second quarter, and the game's over. Well, one thing's for sure, maybe uh, Cumberland, Kentucky wishes that you would have went right back at it instead of having that extra week to prepare. As you will see right now as we roll these highlights on Tornado Watch 97, it's Geneva College and Cumberland, Kentucky. While the Geneva defense searched for a shot at redemption in week two against Cumberland, the Golden Tornado offense picked up right where they left off against Glenville State. Geneva exploded for 202 yards and 28 first quarter points. 
junior tailback Tim McGraw, making his first start for the Golden Tornadoes, rushed for an impressive 138 yards on 16 carries, including the game's first score. Ron Michel's highlight of the night, reception and run, staked the G-men to a three-touchdown lead. Out of 30, sidelines, tries to cut it back in, breaks a tackle at the 20. Michelle down to the 10, the 5, into the end zone, he dives and he's there. From there, Geneva tortured Cumberland in the air and on the ground, scoring almost at will. Touchdown, Geneva. Down about the 23-yard line. Michelle starts it back up the right side. Splits the seat from the 40 out across the 45 to 50. Michelle to the sidelines. Michelle to the 40. 30. One man to beat. Got the angle, and he will bump him out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Myers, as he stands up, takes the snap. Myers hands off straight ahead up the middle. They got a hole. There goes Savannah. Savannah down to the 10, the 5, into the end zone. Touchdown. Paul Fath and John Rose spearheaded a Geneva defense intent on salvation. Bath recorded two quarterback sacks, while Rose captured a fumble and rambled for a 10-yard score. A Justin Myers to Mike Holleran touchdown put the finishing touches on a 49-7 Geneva run. Touchdown, Geneva. All right, so... Your role over Cumberland, Kentucky. And then I figure, hey, it's going to be an exciting Saturday, and I'm listening to the Tornadoes on the Tornadoes radio network. It's close. But then again, it's a Division II team that you're taking on again. And then in the second half, it was all Tornadoes. Great football game, Coach. Well, it was a great football game if you were listening to it. It was one of those tough games if you were coaching. But let's give our kids some credit. At halftime, the score was not at a 28. We came out and played great defense. They scored only three points and we end up with an 18-point victory. But Montgomery, West Virginia is a very difficult place to play, and West Virginia Tech is a formidable opponent. They're a very tough football team, although the record does not show it. I think they're going to win some football games this year. Well, they got a new coach, they got a new attitude, and they're really trying to do what you were doing when you came to Geneva a few years ago, rebuild. Exactly right, and they're going to get it done. They've got some good student athletes, they've got some good players, and they've got a good coaching philosophy. When you get that going, you're going to be successful. I'll tell you, it was a good football game and result. Huh, Geneva wins, and in a big way. Let's check it out now on Tornado Watch 97. Geneva trekked to Montgomery in week three in search of a road win at West Virginia Tech. Early on, a rash of mistakes threatened to spoil the game plan. Down 14 to nothing. The Golden Tornadoes turn things around on the ground, blitzing Tech with three straight rushing scores. Keen Johnson propelled Tech back into contention with an electrifying 78 yard run. The Golden Tornadoes countered with back-to-back -back scores by Josh Beatley and Matt Savannah. Ron Michel put Tech down for the count with a spectacular 87-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Mike Rebar and Danny Gardner led a spirited Geneva defensive effort. Rebar recorded a pair of interceptions, while Gardner led the GTs with 11 tackles. Leif Ellis punctuated the scoring from two yards out to settle the outcome at 49-31.
Another great win for Gino DeMarco's Golden Tornadoes of Geneva on the road at West Virginia Tech. Now let's talk about some great things on campus at Geneva College in Beaver Falls with the school's president, Dr. Jack White. Indeed, it was a great run, win, Rob. 150 years, sesquicentennial, a lot to be proud of. My question to you, doctor, is longevity. Wow. Well, first I want to say I'm not 150 years old, even <laughs> though I may good. look or feel a little bit like that. But indeed, uh, we would say at Geneva that it's God's providence that's caused that. And then a long list of predecessors to me as well, and obviously a solid commitment to our Christian purposes. Let's talk about the mission of Geneva College. What is it? To educate and minister to a diverse student body in order that uh, they might become servant leaders, transforming society for the kingdom of Christ. There's that word, or those words, servant leaders. Explain, if you will. At Geneva, we try to emphasize that though there certainly is a great need for leaders in our culture, there's tremendous recognition of that today, that that word servant is a key because only true leadership comes through servanthood. I think the greatest example of that, Rob, is Jesus as he, uh, for example, gets down and washes the disciples' feet to evidence servanthood. All right, let's talk about the students at Geneva and the impact that you hope that they have on society long after the classroom. We've actually said it in our mission, and that is we hope that they go out and bring transformation in the sense that they take moral stands in the jobs that they have, obviously that they do their jobs with excellence, and that they volunteer in the community and in their churches as well. Now, I know that you've been in, with the school since 1970, but you've been the president. I know you're awfully proud of that since 1992. Some of the things that have happened in your tenure. Well, talking about my own pride, again, I want to emphasize my associates and so forth. But uh, it is true. We've uh, had two programs accredited, our business program and our engineering program. And we're also right now into a building program with a new academic building in progress as we speak. Beautiful, beautiful, absolute beautiful, the building. I want to talk about um, the sports program and the faith aspect. Your thoughts about how the two do intermingle. Well, I would say somebody like Gino DeMarco is a tremendous illustration of what, we, what we're committed to. First of all, a coach who loves Christ and wants to serve Christ and to communicate that to the athletes as well. That's the most important dimension. Well, here's this catchword, millennium. What do you look to, uh, for Geneva to be in the next century or hope it to be? Rob, we're talking about adding more academic programs, an academic program, for example, for people in ministry in the degree completion mode. We're talking about adding a doctor's degree in psychology, an excellent program that we've had. We're talking about a new aspect of the business program, a master of business uh, arts and, and so forth. So building on the past, but hoping to start those new programs as well. Well, Dr. White, as always, a pleasure and uh, a job well done. Keep it up. Thanks, Rob. All right, when we come back on this uh, edition of the Geneva College Football Show, a profile on an up-and-coming quarterback who's making a lot of noise in the NAIA, Justin Myers. Stay tuned, everybody. You know, really nice coach of the president of Geneva, Dr. Jack White, to stop by and talk to us. And, you know, as I alluded to, going out to a commercial break here on Tornado Watch 97, Justin Myers, up close and personal. And i got to be honest with you, I still can't believe what he did to my Lions a few years ago, but what a talented young man in Geneva has obviously been the right choice for him. Well, when Justin visited uh, Geneva, uh, he was very impressed with our faculty, with the people that he met on campus. That went into making his decision, and he made it early. And thank the Lord we got him. All right, let's talk about Justin Myers and where does he fit in over the next couple of years. Of course, we've talked earlier about Rich McClellan, the kid out of Butler that he replaced. I mean, a four-year All-American, some big spikes to fill. No question. There was some pressure. And uh, as an offense coach, we tried to, uh, you know, take it away from him early. We've always been a tailback-oriented offense. But, uh, you know, that performance against Glenville being a national player of the week, uh, we're going to give him more and more of what we do offensively because he can handle it. He surely can. Right now, some well personal thoughts from the quarterback of the Golden Tornadoes, Justin Myers.
Justin Myers possesses tremendous athletic ability. Uh, at this level, you, you seldom see a quarterback that can see the whole field and be able to check off two or three times. He does that. He's got a tremendous release, a very strong arm, and, and he's a very good athlete. I had some Division I offers, but I chose to come to Geneva because Coach DeMarco really convinced me that he has turned the program around here at Geneva, and he has installed some great Christian attitudes as well as uh, football attitudes to, for us to believe that we can go out and win every game we play. Justin Myers, in his first college start, had to fill some real big shoes. Rich McClellan had started for four years for us and uh, was an All-American, went down as the winningest quarterback in the history of Geneva, and Justin, in his first night as a Golden Tornado, ends up being the NAI National Player of the Week, throwing for over 330 yards, four touchdowns. Uh, his second game, he comes back and throws for four more touchdowns and has a quarterback rating of over 220, which is, is just phenomenal. My, my junior year in high school, we made it to the Western Final, and we ended up losing to Washington. And being back to the Western Final my senior year playing New Brighton, it was, it was just such a great honor to be back there. And then we went on. We didn't want to be denied, and we went on to win that game, went to the state championship. It was just a great feeling for us. Playing against Justin Myers in, uh, in the playoffs and in high school was real enthusiastic. I mean, it was exciting because we knew that they had a good team. We knew that Justin was going to throw the ball a lot, and we also knew that we weren't the best pass defensive team. So it was going to be a real good game. And uh, what ended up happening is they got the ball driving down and uh, fourth down and goal. And Justin threw a pass, which was intercepted by Chris Hall, which is now at Geneva College. Um, and they called a late hit. Justin's uncle was a referee. He called a late hit. It was just like murder. I mean, then they got the ball first down again, and pretty much over from there. Last series of the game, we had the ball inside our 10-yard line. We had about 11 plays from inside the 10-yard line. And uh, one of the controversial plays was I threw an interception, and I got a late hit, late hit on me. And still the kids from New Brighton today think that that just was a bad call. And uh, we ended up scoring on that drive and winning the game by three points. First couple of days at Geneva College, it was kind of just weird. Because Justin was on my team, now I was a kid that just beat our playoff team. I didn't know how to take it, and I told Coach DeMarco flat out, he's like, Coach, I'm on defense, he's on offense, he's a quarterback, I'm going to make up my own blitz and I'm going to hit him. Justin's one of the best quarterbacks I've ever seen. Um, I've stated in the papers before, if I had a fantasy football league, he'd be my starting quarterback. But there's only one thing, no matter how good he is, all the recognition he gets, player of the year, player of the week, whatever, Myself and Justin both know he's still lying about that late hit. That's 1997 Justin Myers, but let's go back. October 2nd, 1926, not only my dad's birthday, by the way, the day he was born, but also the day that uh, Geneva College football was born in a big way. They beat Harvard, and Cal Hubbard leads the way. Incredible to think of a man of the stature of Cal Hubbard. He's in three Hall of Fames. He led Geneva to what is the equivalent to the Orange Bowl victory, played in the NFL. Uh, you know, when you're on Reeves Field, and incidentally was built the same year that he came to Geneva, when you're on Reeves Field and you think about Cal Hubbard, it's truly an amazing thing and, and really a, a treasured pass of Geneva football. You know, Coach, the thing that excites me is I could see somebody ending up in the Pro Football Hall of Fame someday. You never know. I mean, I see some players on this Geneva team that uh, there is that possibility down the road, maybe having a pro career. Well, it, you know, that's not out of the question. We've had some kids that have got looked at, but, uh, you know, we're a small school. But, uh, you know, the past uh, is a glorious one when you think about Cal Hubbard. He is truly one of the greatest players to ever play football. And I'll tell you what, Geneva has a rich tradition, as you will find out right now in this segment as we look back at Hall of Famer Cal Hubbard on Tornado Watch 97. What asset did the New York Giants, winners of the 1927 National Football Championship, and the Green Bay Packers, the league's first three-time champions, have in common? The answer? Geneva College's All-American tackle, Cal Hubbard. Hubbard was part of the Giants' defense in 1927 that yielded only 27 points in 13 games. A remarkable record no other NFL defense has even come close to breaking. The 6'5", 250-pound game-breaking tackle was also a member of the Packers' defense that throttled its opponents towards successive titles in 1929, 1930, 
and 1931. One man was responsible for Cal Hubbard coming to Reeves Field and Geneva College, Bo McMillan. As a quarterback, McMillan brought national recognition to Center College in Danville, Kentucky by beating undefeated Harvard 6-0 and went on to become a Southern legend in the 1920s. At an early age, Cal Hubbard developed a hero worship of Bo McMillan. Hubbard decided to attend Centenary College because McMillan had just been appointed head coach of the college's football team. And when McMillan took the Geneva College job in 1924, his all-star tackle followed. Hubbard's arrival to Geneva College was destined for glory. That magical year in 1924 witnessed three events that changed the complexion of Geneva College's football program forever. The hiring of McMillan to lead the Golden Tornadoes, the breaking of ground at Reeves Field in Beaver Falls, PA, the team's new stadium, and the acquisition of a new gridiron legend, Cal Hubbard. Hubbard was forced to sit out a season after transferring from Centenary. In order to support himself, Hubbard, affectionately termed the biggest man in Beaver Falls, worked in the Armstrong Cork Company, which was located on the exact same field the Golden Tornadoes practice on today. Hubbard's most defining moment in a career full of big games, big plays, and big victories came his senior season at Geneva College. Behind the stellar play of Cal Hubbard, Geneva humbled Harvard 16 to seven. It was that game alone that drew the attention of pro scouts throughout the pro leagues and allowed him to be named to Grantland Rice's All-America team. In addition to the Harvard game, Geneva was invited to the first Orange Bowl, then known as the Orange Blossom Festival and beat Oglethorpe University nine to seven. Hubbard signed with the New York Giants for $150 a game as a rookie, based on the advice of Coach McMillan. McMillan told him, If I were you, I would pick the New York Giants. At least they are sure to pay you. In his two seasons with the New York Giants, Hubbard missed only two minutes of action. He set the league on fire in 1927. Behind Hubbard's stellar play, the Giants won their first national football championship. Hubbard was then traded to the Green Bay Packers in 1928, where he finished his professional career. Playing under head coach Curly Lambeau, Hubbard excelled as a tackle on both sides of the ball. His first five seasons with the Packers saw Hubbard win all league honors as a defensive tackle. In 1962, Hubbard was named to the National Pro Football Hall of Fame as an end in tackle. In 1963, he was elected as a charter member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, which was just opening in Canton. Hubbard's bust and biography can be found at the Hall of Fame today. Six years later, he was selected as the single most outstanding tackle of the NFL's first 50 years. Hubbard was also elected to the NFL's all-time 75th season team as the finest tackle to ever play the game. In addition, he is the only person to be elected to both Pro Football Hall of Fames as well as the Baseball Hall of Fame. Hubbard received that honor as an umpire. You know, when you think about what Cal Hubbard did and uh, the only person to be in a three Hall of Fames, uh, a player that led his team to what is the equivalent of the Orange Bowl now, uh, to beat Harvard, which probably now would be the equivalent of Geneva beating Nebraska, it's awesome to think that we're in the same football field. In fact, the first year that he was there was the first year that Reeves Field was erected. So, I mean, Cal Hubbard to be uh, a member of Geneva's glorious past is, is truly something special. The ultimate compliment paid to Cal Hubbard came from one of college football's greatest legends. The galloping ghost, Red Grange said, Cal Hubbard, he's the greatest tackle I've ever seen or been pulverized by. Range was just one of literally thousands to remember Cal Hubbard that way. Well, we are back in Cal Hubbard. That was then. This is now. This is your life, Gino DeMarco. Tornado Watch 97. Let's take a look at the next three weeks. Taylor up and coming. Going to be the first afternoon game. Yeah, looking forward to that Saturday at Reeves. And, of course, Malone and Tri-State. 
Yes, Taylor comes in undefeated, a 2-0 and record, coached by Steve Wiltz, who's a good friend of mine, and he's doing a super job there. You know, he's got those kids believing that they can win, and that's half the battle. So we're going to have a very difficult test this Saturday at 1.30 at Reeves, so we need everybody uh, to come out and support the GTs. And then we play Malone, which is going to be homecoming at 7 o'clock on a Saturday night. That is going to be a barn burner. And uh, we've had some great games with the people from Canton, and uh, uh, that's going to be real fun. And then we go out to Tri-State on an away game against uh, Tri-State Thunder, and they're a new program, very much like Malone, and Coach there has done a super job. So uh, we've got three very difficult weeks ahead of us, but we need to take care of business, and the business at hand is Taylor. Rebar, Fath, Holleran, Michelle, I mean Myers, uh, Cobbs, uh, McGraw, Beatley, the names all over the Tri-State, speaking of the Tri-State, and that's when I start to realize that, hey, this Geneva College football team is becoming the Tri-State's NAIA team. You're really getting out and about. You're taking care of all corners, three corners, Panhandle of West Virginia, Eastern Ohio, Western Pennsylvania. Oh, without question, you know, you got to win the recruiting war in your backyard, and we feel that uh, in the tri-state area, the best small college players reside because the high school coaches do such a great job. And I think that's the thing that's made us successful, are the players in our locker room and the players in, in our tri-state area. And we need to continue to attract those student athletes. We have one student athlete, though, that's not from our tri-state area, Ronnie Michelle, who's from Covington, Louisiana. And, Raging Cajun. And Ra yeah, and, and he's resided here for the last three or four years, so we could probably claim him as a resident. He has just, uh, he's been a tremendous player. Uh, in the next three games, he will go down as the most prolific pass receiver, the most prolific kick returner uh, to ever play at Geneva, and he's going to hold every personal record. But, you know, when you think about Ronnie Michelle, he's such an unselfish player. Uh, he's always committed toward the team's goals and toward Geneva winning. So uh, there's one kid that they didn't from the tri-state area, but but he likes it here so much, I think we're going to get him for good. And if you want to see more about Ronnie Michelle, that raging Cajun, we'll do it next week on Tornado Watch 97. All right, back to the business at hand, and that's football. This NAIA, uh, very competitive. I mean, and when you have a national ranking such as you, people expect big things. And when you get some of these big-time players in there, they expect big things. So I'll tell you, your road uh, is going to be very tough to hoe in the next uh, couple of weeks. Well, the NAI is, is, a, is a great division of football. It's a scholarship division of football of 100 teams, and, and we're in the Mid-States League, which is considered the best conference in the NAI. And, uh, you know, we feel that if we can compete within our conference, there's some great people that play football there that, that we can compete nationally. So uh, the NAI is great football. Uh, it attracts great players, and we're just fortunate to be able to compete week in and week out. Well, they're very fortunate to have you two as a head coach. Good to see you, my friend. Great to be here. Ron. Gino DeMarco on Tornado Watch 97.